Hey again, everyone. It's Rob Ryder on Saturday, June 26, 2021. And today, white rage is not white privilege or supremacy, and in fact, is very good for a general to care. And uh, I think it's important we have this conversation because in this last week, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Milley, spoke for about two minutes and, you know, he's overturned the apple cart. So bad, in fact, that it's caused General McCaffrey to come out and tell, say, that Tucker Carlson should be fired because he called General Milley stupid and a pig. What could General Milley say in two minutes that Tucker Carlson would call him stupid and a pig? Right now, I agree with General McCaffrey. If we were in the Army, well, Tucker Carlson is, you know, he's got to fall on the sword or whatever. He's done. That's too egregious of a mistake. Even though I'm sure it's a mistake and he's just misinformed because he has his own prejudices from the clique that he grew up in, but he's kind of clueless on some of the fine details, right? Most people don't realize the devil works in the details, although they say it all the time. They don't ever go look for the details the devil's working in, but he's all over in the details. And everything that's wrong is because of a detail that has been let to go bad and has caused white rage, right? So, um, you know, I want to look at, uh, you know, we're, it's only two minutes long. We're going to listen to what General uh, Milley had to say, and uh, then I have some commentary on it. And I want to let the general know, General, I have had the answer to your question of where the white rage comes from. It comes from the fact that the people in Congress, the judicial officers and the executive officers, or just go read the sixth article of the Constitution, sir, those people in Section 3, subsection 3 of uh, the sixth article, it lists all the different people that need to take an oath to the Constitution. Well, they haven't done it, sir. Right? That oath was defined in the first law of the United States after the ratification of the Constitution, signed into law by President George Washington on June 1st, 1789. Right? Uh, an act to regulate time and manner of uh, administering certain oaths. And in that act, it says this is the oath that satisfies the 6th Article of the Constitution. I state your name, solemnly swear to support Constitution of the United States. Period. Everybody's supposed to take that. And, you know, so everybody in the sixth article, which is all the senators, representatives, uh, judicial and executive officers of the United States and the several states and the state legislatures are supposed to take that oath. And they're not taking it. And they did up until the Civil War, and then they stopped taking it. And now, instead, people in Congress are taking an oath that was actually the oath that was meant to be taken by Confederates after the Civil War so that they could hold an office in the government. But it's not the oath that satisfies the Sixth Article, Sixth Article of the Constitution. And the oath that they do take, they don't use their full legal name on it, so they're really not taking an oath in their name. They're evading taking the oaths that they're supposed to take. It's an evasion by esquires. Right, Crown agents, esquires. And esquires want to call the rest of us misters because in that British system, a class system, a mister, you know, is below an esquire. Now, an esquire is not a title of nobility. He's just a crown agent. He works for the crown, but he's not a title of nobility. Anyways, but they're a foreign agent. And, you know, most well, I won't say most people know, but most people who watch videos and this kind of stuff know that, right? That that's what the bar association is all about and so forth. So it's a real messed up system, sir. And I'm going to point out a complaint that I just today sent to the Capitol Police, right? The United States Capitol Police, because all this shit is happening in their jurisdiction. That 570 acres they're supposed to have control over is where the, these oaths are supposed to have been taken and kept. And two of the people that sit on the police board are uh, the sergeant at arms of the Senate and the sergeant of arms of the House. And they could both each just go into their clerk's office and say, well, let's see what kind of oaths we got here. And we can put an end to the shit. I mean, they could do it today. So maybe if a general ordered them to do it, they would. All right, anyways, um, but what about rage, right? Because he said white rage. That's what the general said. That was the big thing, right? The general used the term white rage. But he wanted to understand the white rage. What would cause people to go to the Capitol 
and uh, you know, um, well, he said assault, assault the capital. He'd really like to know what would cause that. It never happened before, so what caused that shit? Well, yeah, I want him to know, too, what caused it. What caused it is the people inside, sir, are not the government of the United States. They're just de facto uh, actors that have invaded the system. So, but what is rage, right? Well, rage is a Hebrew word, first of all, so it's older than Latin. It's older than Old English. It goes all the way back. It's an old word. It means gnashing of teeth. Okay, this is uh, Webster's Dictionary. I don't. Perhaps we should go ask a uh, a rabbi what rage means. Violent anger accompanied with furious words, gestures, agitation, anger, excited fury, passion sometimes rises to rage. Well, I'd say that happened on the sixth. Um, vehemence and violent exacerbation of anything painful, as a rage of pain, the rage of fe fever, rage of hunger or thirst. Yeah, well, rage of Exploitation, yeah, that could have been. Fury, extreme violence as the rage of a tempest. Rage is also known as frenzy or fury. It's intense, uncontrolled anger. That is an increased stage of hostile response to a perceived egregious injury or injustice. Yes, that's what happened. Right? The general defined the way that he sees it. It was just rage. It wasn't an insurrection. You know, it wasn't uh, trespassing. No, it was... Uh, Rage. Now, what caused the rage, right? Who was right in the in the action that this rage happened in? So, and of course, I say we are, right? And so does everybody else, but we need to make the... My point is, that's what the, the general is leaving the door open for somebody to come explain to him what caused the white rage. So I'm going to take my swing at it. If you have a better, you know, channel to the general, then go tell him. Go tell them these people don't have an oath of office. They say that, sir, the, the evidence is in the records at the clerk's office in the Senate and the House, which oath they took. And if they didn't take this particular oath, then they didn't satisfy the sixth article of the Constitution, sir. And, you know, I've already looked at all this stuff. I'm, I'm telling you, it didn't happen. Right? So, but I don't have any authority. So let's see, an emotion characterized by tension, hostility, rising from frustration, real or imagined injury, injury or by another, or perceived injustice. Yes, all these things happen. Yes, 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 yes. So we're covered. Thank you, General. All right, now we just need you to go, you know, one step further. Uh, right, it's usually differentiated from hostility, so it wasn't a hostile action. It was not necessarily accompanied by any destructive actions, but rather by excessive expression. Well, if it's good enough for Antifa, we can use their same, uh, you know, their standard as our standard. If that was peaceful, then everything that happened at the um, Capitol on the 6th was peaceful. Okay, so hang on just a second. Let me get myself organized. Yeah, so, okay, here we go. Like I said, we got General McCaffrey saying Tucker Carlson's got to go. And all that happened because of the two minutes of, uh, you know, uh, narrative we're going to hear right now from the general. So let's just listen for a minute, see what the man had to say. It caused all this angst. race theory would you like a minute or so to comment on that do you remember what we were what your line of questioning or thought was there um sure um first of all on the issue of critical race theory etc I'll, I'll obviously have to get much smarter on whatever the theory is he doesn't know um, the theory right but That's i not do a think it's important actually uh, for those of us in uniform to be open-minded and be widely read and the united states military academy is a university uh, and it is important that we train and we understand. Uh, and I, I want to understand white rage, and I'm white, and I want to understand it. So what is it that caused thousands of people to assault this building and try to overturn the Constitution of the United States of America? What caused that? I want to find that out. I want to maintain an open mind here, and I do want to analyze it. It's important that we understand that, because our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Guardians, they come from the American people. So it is important that the leaders, now and in the future, 
do understand it. I've read Mao Zedong. I've read, I've read Karl Marx. I've read Lenin. That doesn't make me a communist. So what is wrong with understanding having some situational understanding about the country for which we are here to defend. And I personally find it offensive that we are accusing the United States military, our general officers, our commissioned, non-commissioned officers of being, quote, woke or something else because we're studying some theories that are out there. That was started at Harvard Law School years ago, and it proposed that there were laws in the United States, antebellum laws prior to the Civil War, that led to uh, a power differential with African Americans that were three quarters of a human being when this country was formed. And then we had a civil war and emancipation proclamation to change it. And we brought it up to the Civil Rights Act in 1964. It took another 100 years to change that. So look it, I do want to know. And I respect your service and you and I are both Green Berets. But I want to know. And it matters to our military and the discipline and cohesion of this military. And I thank you for the opportunity to make a comment on that. Thank you. Okay, so, you know, what was wrong with that? He's saying, I want to know, all of my troops, right, are the children of the people that are storming the Capitol. Well, what the fuck is that about? Right, that's what he's saying. So this is all good for us. He, you know, he didn't call it anything that they're calling it. He didn't call it white supremacy or white anything other than white rage, right? We're pissed off. Of course we are. Thank you, General. And he should know. And so, you know, the... People making a big deal about the books that they read and stuff, or that he's read. You know, of course they read these things. Uh, in fact, um, hang on here, somewhere here, I, I had it right. This is the 2017. The U.S. Army Chief of Staff professional reading list, right? So, I mean, the Chief of Staff would be really, really happy if everybody in the Army read all these books. Right, and then uh, you can download your own copy. That for whatever reason this doesn't open real fast, but you know, uh, let's see what it says. The U.S. Army Chief of Staff professional reading list is divided in six categories: strategic environment, regional studies, history, and military history, leadership, Army professionalism, and fiction. All right, these sublists are intended to steer readers to topics which they are most interested. Each of these books is suitable for readers of any rank or position. Right, so you know, a private is, could read these books, is what they're saying. Right, that everybody should read. And there's a whole list of books, and you know, this is just the chief of staff's reading list. The, um, they got a reading list for uh, uh, non-commissioned officers. I think that the uh, maybe I think the chairman, chief chaff, uh, the chairman of the joint chiefs of staff. It's his own reading list. So, yeah, they have reading lists with lots of books in them. So adding one more thing about something like he said. Now, he, didn't, he doesn't even know what the theory is. What is it we're talking about? What is the theory, right? He's not interested in their fucking theory. He might be interested in their tactics, but not in their theory. So if you're going to fight something, right, you have to understand it. And you know, it just it blows me away that everybody got so been out of shape because of what the general said. And to me, what this is, is just a, a, an indication that now they're trying to divide the people from the army. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that's going to save us people is the army. All right, that's our, that's our uh, centurion, my friend, right, is the army. And uh, least we forget, it was a centurion who was the first one to receive the Holy Ghost other than a Jew. Okay, so uh, a couple more things, and then I'm going to read this little short blah blah I filed today, and we'll call it a day. Hang on. Okay, uh, General Milley. So if you give me just a few minutes, I'll explain to you better this thing about the uh, lack of oaths. And it isn't that I haven't tried to tell you already. I, I sent, uh, I think it was on the 13th of June. Right? Is that what that says here? Let me get rid of this here. Yeah, 13 June. All right, I sent to the Joint Inspector General Action Request Form. And I uh, have yet to get an acknowledgement from it, sir. But it's, you know, it's with the IG. And in it, I said that the states of the Union are denied a Republican form of government because persons now acting as senators, representatives, Members of state, le several state legislatures, 
and executive and judicial officers, both the United States and of the several states, failed to execute the oath of office that satisfies six article of the Constitution of the United States as mandated in the first law of the United States. Sir, is that plain enough? I mean, I can't write it any fucking plainer than that. All right, jeepers. How could somebody not understand what that's saying? They didn't take the proper oath, sir. If I can't get to anybody, I've been unable to get anybody to do anything about it. But in an act to regulate the time and manner of administering a certain oath, that'd be one stat 23, specifies the form of this oath, which is I state your name, do silently swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Right? And where that AB goes, well, you have to put your full legal name in there. Further, the former oath in the second article of the Constitution of the United States for the President of the United States of America was intentionally corrupted and rendered unconstitutional by Esquire John Glover Roberts, acting as Chief Justice, who added both the name of the alleged President-elect and a religious test, so help me God, resulting in this office being vacant, qualified, and incumbent. Right? An Esquire, John Glover Roberts, intentionally changed the form of the oath that's in the second article for the President of the United States of America. That's the office that it's for. Just go read the second article. It's not for the President of the United States. It's for the President of the United States of America. Right? Well, he put, uh, and this isn't the first time they've done this. They do it all the time. They didn't put, they tried to put the President-elect's name in at the beginning. There's no place for it in the oath. And then they added, so help me God, at the end. And that's a religious test. And, well, I just made that oath unconstitutional. So the oath for President of the United States of America and Sixth Article, that gives them senators, representatives, members, and officers, is being intentionally avoided as part of a scheme to allow Crown agents, that'd be those esquires, to impersonate as constitutionally empowered civil government of the United States and several states while they terrorize the citizenry for foreign powers, and embezzle the wealth of the nation. I complained numerous times in various ways to many government agencies using the email address robwriteraol.com or cornerrecordaol.com and suggest the IG search them out. However, I am attaching examples for review pertaining to the United States Congress, uh, Governor of Michigan, and no judge, justice, governor, attorney general, secretary of state, federal agency employee, commissioner, township supervisor, etc., is qualified for office. And if they're not qualified for office, sir, then they're not, you know, then then the United States has reneged on its guarantee to the states to provide a Republican form of government. There's no place in the Constitution that talks about a democracy. The only form of government spoken of is a Republican form of government, and to have that, we have to have constitutionally empowered officers, and for that to happen, they have to have taken the oath that's in 1 Stat 23, which is, I state your name, do silence for a firm, I will support the Constitution of the United States. Yes, so, sir, now I sent that, uh, what did I say? The 13th, what are we at today? That's 13 days ago. I have not heard from the IG, and according to the Inspector General's manual, I'm supposed to get some kind of a, uh, uh, acknowledgement. So I have sent him a second notice, but you know, maybe General Milley, you can go down and check on it yourself. Okay. And but I said that was a couple of weeks ago. Well, I just sent it again today from, because I had gone and looked at, uh, oh, hang on a second here. Jeepers. And uh, General Milley, I'm sure you're aware, but I don't know, you know, how much people know about all these different things. So, you know, forgive me if I'm telling you something that you're obviously aware of, right? But this is the Capitol Police Board, and this person here is the Sergeant at Arms and the doorkeeper for the Senate, and this person here is the Sergeant at Arms for the Capitol, or excuse me, for the House of Representatives, right? So. These people are responsible for the Capitol Police. And I'm saying the Capitol Police are responsible for arresting these people who are in their jurisdiction that are impersonating officers of the United States or senators or representatives. And so I said, well, what the hell? I'll send these guys a complaint. 
Now, uh, if anybody else wants to send them a complaint, right, you could just go here, contact us, report a complaint. That's one way to do it. Or, you know, here is an email address, which is the other way to do it. And so I actually did it both ways. But, you know, if you have a exhibit you want to give them, the problem with using this system is they only allow you one megabyte of exhibits, and I had more than that. So what the heck, I sent them both ways. And this is what I sent. Right, because I, I want these two people here, right, to go to their respective chambers, go to the clerk's office, go find the records, and start looking and seeing if these people took an oath for one stat 23. And if they didn't, then you have probable cause to believe that none of them have, and you need to start an immediate investigation. And I'm hoping that, you know, General Milley can, you know, convince them to go do it, if that's what it takes. But in the meantime, hey, I went to the Capitol Police Board. Capitol Police, duty to eliminate source of white rage from its jurisdiction. Members of the Capitol Police Board, I accept your oath, bind you to it, remind you of your promise to God and duty to the United States. This past week at the United States Capitol Building, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs stated that he wanted to understand the cause of white rage directed at Capitol Buildings, at Capitol Building occupants. The cause of the right rage General Milley referred to is that individuals claiming to be an incumbent of a Senate, uh, of the Senate, a representative or executive or judicial office of the United States, several states, has executed the oath required to satisfy six hour Constitution of the United States, which is, wait, we should know this by now, right? I state your name, you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. How difficult can that be? So this oath in an act to regulate time and manner of administering certain oaths, 1 Stat 23, which is Exhibit 1, and we'll take a minute to look at it, must be executed to satisfy the Sixth Article of the Constitution of the United States. And its omission denies states of the Republican form of government guaranteed by the Fourth Article of the Constitution. It's really that simple, sir. One paragraph explanation why it's so important this be done right. Right. If you're not going to enforce the first law of your nation, then why would anybody expect you to enforce any other ones? So that, therefore, I demand you enforce the first law of the nation, which is right here, where it says, being enacted by a Senate, House of Representatives, United States of America, in Congress assembled, that the oath or affirmation required by the sixth article of the Constitution of the United States, doesn't say United States of America, it says the Constitution of the United States shall be administered in the following form. To wit, I state your name, you silently swear, or affirm, the case may be, that I'll support the Constitution of the United States. Well, then it goes on to say what you need to do afterwards, sir. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's only two pages long. You know, if that was all it took was for me to read it to you, I'd do it. All right? You tell me that, sir, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a video reading it to you. But that is what it says, right? So um, where does that leave us? The next paragraph. We know where to go look to see what the oath is they're supposed to take. Oh, there is one other thing, because I always forget to mention this. This also, they have in here a particular oath that the clerks are supposed to take. Uh, the Secretary of the Senate and the Clerk of the House of Representatives, for the time being, shall, at the time of taking oath or affirmation aforesaid, each take an oath or affirmation of the following words. I, Secretary of the Senate or Clerk of the House, as case may be, of the United States of America, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will truly and faithfully discharge duties of my office to the best of my knowledge and abilities. Well, this was signed into law by President Washington. Now, is that what they're doing? All right, well, send down the doorkeeper to find out. Okay. Uh, so because all this, because the oath wasn't taken, the Republican form of government guaranteed by the Fourth Article of the Constitution does not exist. According to the House section of the Congressional Record for January 28, 2021, which isn't the right day for this to have been done, but it's the day that it shows up, what I'm going to show you in Exhibit 2, after an adjournment for the day, the alleged representatives omitted 1 Stat 23 and pretended to execute an oath required of Confederates to be elected, appointed to government office after the Civil War armistice, 
codified in the states uh, in the United States Code is 5 U.S.C. 3331, which would be your Exhibit 3, using a fictitious identification instead of their full legal name. So they didn't take the oath for the sixth article. They took an oath as what was intended to be taken by ex-Confederates after the Civil War, and when they did it, they didn't even use their proper name. Right? So they hid their identity on their oath. Um, so if the sergeant at arms of the Senate and House were to check the records of the Senate and House clerk, although I think it's the secretary for the Senate, so forgive me if I don't have the office proper, would uncover that the oath to satisfy the sixth article had been avoided, and as a result of this submission, the United States Congress is vacant, qualified incumbents, and a Republican form of government. Right? We don't have it. And so, Exhibit 2. Let's see real quick. Ah, uh, yeah, the Congressional Record for the House on January 28, 2021. I think I just read that somewhere. And you can go through this, you know, and you'll find out really soon that uh, about here we see, well, here's an adjournment saying that we're done for today until the 1st of February, which, you know, was over the weekend away. Uh, oath... Uh, of office members, re residents, right? The, the oath of office required by the Sixth Article of the Constitution of the United States, comma, and as provided by this act to be administered to members. Well, they're talking about two different oaths, the one for the Sixth Article and the one for this act. Because the one for this act isn't the oath for the Sixth Article. It, was, it has to do with the oath that was required after the Civil War. Which this is the oath right here, these words which is in 5 U.S.C. 101, which is the oath that was required by ex-Confederates to hold an office in the government after the armistice was signed for the um, to end the Civil War. Didn't really end. We just went into an armistice. Again, this is the oath of Confederates, and they're still taking it. So they're having you take it, saying, I'm you know, for the Confederate side. But they're not taking the oath of by Sixth Article. And then here's all the names they used. Right now we're going to go through all the people that took it. And you see they're using middle initials. Uh, they use nicknames in the middle like, uh, right, Rick. Right, this isn't this man's name. Earl L. Buddy Carter, that's not the man's name. Henry C. Hank Johnson Jr., that's not the man's name. Right, so they're not identifying themselves with the name that's on their identification. They're using an alias. And they're getting away with it. Right? Well, after they get away with all that, right? then they go on and they do another oath to get classified information. So now they're getting state secrets, you know, using the same thing, these fictitious names. Okay, and uh, so here it is, is USC 3331. And what I wanted to point out in this law, which has that same oath in it, it says at the end, this section does not affect other oaths required by law, and the oath required by law is 1 stat 23. And it goes in to talk about uh, they had these revised statutes from back in the day. This is all back in 1884 time. Here's where we're talking about the act. Right? It's all tied into here now. And, uh, you know, what does it mean today? Right? Here's them old laws. Da 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 da. Right? What, what all this means is this has nothing to do with 1 Stat 23, which was the first law of. Passed by the Congress and uh, signed by President Link, uh, President Washington, and we're going to do that one first before we do anything else. Because if you ain't done that, you're not satisfying the sixth article of the Constitution. Okay, hey, we're almost done here. Uh, so yeah, the sergeants at arms just went down and checked; they'd find that out, right? It is these usurpers who occupy the Capitol building on January 6, twenty twenty-one. They were already in the building. And disrupted the certification of the presidential electors that white rage is directed at. I have to go on to say that because of what happened on the 6th, they really didn't certify anybody until the 7th, and so they missed their due date. So even though they're continuing on, it wasn't done right even at the time. With all the other shit that was done wrong, this was done wrong also, right? It wasn't done on the 6th. They didn't finish until the 7th. So they missed their date. 
Nevertheless, uh, not only are they usurping the powers of Congress, they are also gaining access to national secrets by pretending to execute a second oath for access to confidential information. These usurpers are personated as members of Congress or enemies of the United States. The United States Capitol Police has a duty to arrest them today. I wonder if they started yet. Any sirens going off in D.C. on Saturday? Because they've had it now for a couple hours. Uh, the lack of votes of office to satisfy a sixth article by imposter senators' representatives is probable cause to investigate all executive and judicial officers in the United States and, uh, and the several states, as well as each state's legislative members for similar omission. Whether you meant to do it or not doesn't matter. It wasn't done. You don't have no authority. You want to be, you want to play the game, you got to come take the oath. Otherwise, you are a usurper. 4 USC 101, Exhibit 4, codified the oath in 1 Stat 23, right, that very first law, to apply specifically to the several states. And this federal law is being violated in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. Just real quick. All right, 4 USC 101, this is for the states, uh, flag, seal, see the government and the states. Every member of state legislature and every executive and judicial officer of a state shall, before he proceeds to execute the duties of his office, take an oath in the following form. To wit, hey, there's that same one again. And, of course, it comes from the same thing. You know, in the sixth article, it, it says state officers. It says officers of the United States also. And it's been said again in federal law, and it still isn't being done. Well, who enforces the federal law at the Capitol, um, you know, in the Capitol building? It should be the Capitol Police. So take notice, Esquire John Glover Roberts, impersonated as Chief Justice of the United States, intentionally invalidated the oath of office required by the second article of the Constitution of the United States, of the President of the United States of America by inserting a name and a religious test. Yeah, hang on just a second. Okay, here's Article 2, Executive Branch, Section 1, all the way at the bottom. Before he enter into the ex execution of his office, he shall take the following oath or affirmation. I do solemnly swear affirm, thou support and execute the office of the President of the United States, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So, um, but up here it talks about... Uh, do, 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 right here, right? The uh, executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. So here's president of the United States of America. But here he's taking an oath. Right, where there's no place to put your name, there's no I, A, B, like 1 Stat 23, so you can't just insert it. You would change the form of the oath. And um, they add, so help me God at the end. Right, There's no so help me God here, but Esquire Robert says it, and so does the, the president-elect say it. And, uh, well, there you are. It's wrong. So they violated the Second Amendment or the Second Article or invalidated the Second Article oath taken by the person claiming to be the president. And they did it to Trump and they did it to Obama and they did it to Clinton and they did it back. They just, you go back, you listen, they're doing it continuously. So this didn't just start happening. This bullshit's been going on for a long time. These people don't have oaths of office in their full legal name. Right, whatever they do, they use a middle initial or some nickname that they, you know, come up to, to define themselves or describe themselves. But they're not using the name that's on their identity, you know, the name that would get you onto an airplane if the Real ID Act was being uh, enforced right now. So, as a result of the omission of constitutionally required oaths, the United States is now without a president, Congress, executive, or judicial officers of the United States or several states. And no state legislatures. So do your duty and end the imposter's insurrection and the cause of white rage for God and country. Amen. And again, this is directed to the Capitol Police Board. Right? I got a grievance because Capitol Police should already taken care of this stuff. And it hasn't happened, which is the source, the white rage. 
So there you are. There's your answer, General. All right, General Milley, your answer is right down the street. Go get with the police board, and we all go take a walk in and, uh, you know, with the doorkeepers and find out where the records are, where's the oath to satisfy the Sixth Article of the Constitution. And when you don't find any, please kick them all out, declare it for what it is, and, uh, you know, reset the clock. That's what we need to happen. Okay, thank you very much. You all have a great day. See you now.